All right, guys. It is now an exciting Sunday night here in the lonely trailer. It is Sunday, November 6, 2023. And for the few of you still hanging with me, uh, I have no internet. So I have been... <laughs> I guess the universe has brought me to read, reading aloud this uh, old manuscript I wrote in 1980, Maurice and the Rainbow Maker, uh, <laughs> about Maurice the Mole, sometimes known as Mo. Just so you know that Mo and Maurice are the are one and the same. So last night we uh, read the first three of seven chapters. There are seven chapters in Maurice and the Rainbow Maker. And uh, so we're going to get right into chapter four, In Trouble. In Trouble. Are you in trouble, little dog? <clears throat> Maurice was glad when morning came, even though it was ugly and drizzling outside. At least there was enough light to see. Ever so quietly, Mo tiptoed past the sleeping creeps, willies, and heebie-jeebies, whose various snores, snorts, and sniffles still echoed throughout the cave. The noise sent one last shudder down Mo's back. A big rotten tree had blown over during the night outside the cave. Boy, Mo said to himself, I'm glad I found some shelter last night, even if I had the creeps, willies, and heebie-jeebies for company. The little mole picked his way around the mud puddles on the floor of the forbidding forest. Looking at all the rotting logs, Mo thought, there were more dead trees than live ones in this forest. There were no birds singing to him, no butterflies, no flowers. Worst of all, there was no sunshine to follow to find his way out. He wished he could find some nice soul to get directions from, but Mo doubted if any nice souls lived in that forest. Mo ambled aimlessly through the chilly drizzle, not knowing if he was getting deeper into the forest or moving toward the edge of it. Something white on the forest floor caught Mo's attention, and he went closer to investigate. He was overjoyed to find it was somebody to talk to. A duck sitting on the ground. Good morning, Mo said cheerfully. Happy to learn that everyone in the ugly forest did not look like the creeps, willies, and heebie-jeebies. What's so good about it? quacked the sitting duck. It's as ugly today as it was yesterday and the day before. But it was a beautiful day yesterday, said Maurice, thinking of the warm sunshine in the fields of opportunity. It may have been pretty where you were yesterday, quacked the duck, but you're here now, and here we never have pretty days. And where, may I ask, am I? asked Mo, scared to hear the answer. You are in trouble, said the sitting duck. I'm in trouble too. Just as the sitting duck finished talking, Mo saw and heard a big rotten limb snap above their heads. Run, yelled Mo. He ran as hard as he could for about 20 feet, which is a hard run if you're only four inches tall. But the duck still sat there. Mo looked back and was horrified to see the limb was lying where he'd been standing a few seconds before. Mo thought for a moment the duck had been hit. He ran back to help. But when he got there, he found the duck sitting as calmly as ever with hardly a ruffled feather. You could have been killed, exclaimed Mo. Listen, quacked the sitting duck. 
When you've been in trouble as long as I have, you just decide to sit and take what's coming. <laughs> Maurice knew it was useless to talk to someone with such a sour attitude toward life. He also knew it was useless to ask the sitting duck about the rainbow maker. He knew the rainbow maker would not have such depressing friends. All Mo wanted from the duck was directions to get out of trouble. <clears throat> I'm not really sure how I got into trouble, said Mo, but could you please tell me how to get out? The sitting duck thought for a moment and said, Well, you have several choices. You could hire a lawyer to get you out of trouble. There are plenty of lawyers in trouble, so you shouldn't have any problem finding one. Or you could try to run from trouble. But let me warn you that, that nearly everyone who tries to run from trouble usually finds himself deeper in trouble. There is one other choice. You can walk the straight and narrow path. If you stay on the straight and narrow path and never, never take any side trips into other areas of trouble, sooner or later you will find yourself out of trouble. So I've heard anyway. Maurice didn't have any money to hire a lawyer, and he wasn't a good runner, so his only choice was to walk the straight and narrow path. But he didn't see any path through the thick forest, much less a straight and narrow one. He asked the duck what to do. If you don't see a path, quacked the sitting duck, then I would guess you'll have to make your own. But remember, straight and narrow. I guess you're right, said Mo. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. What's so good about it? Quacked the sitting duck. He was as crabby as ever. Maurice ignored the last ugly comment and began walking out of trouble. He made his path as straight and narrow as possible. It was rough and slow going, especially as Mo had to climb over so many logs and wade through so many dirty mud puddles to keep the path as straight and narrow as possible. He was worried that his path wasn't straight or narrow enough and that he might never get out of trouble. But he did his best because his best was the most he could do. He hoped his best was enough because it was all he had, and if it wasn't enough, things would only get worse. While blazing his straight and narrow path, Maurice banged into something very odd. A huge wall of dirty dishes, dirty clothes, books with bookmarks halfway through them, socks with holes in them, and other objects that needed attention in one way or another. He couldn't go around the strange-looking wall because that would put a bend in his path. So he decided to climb over the wall. He held the piece of rainbow between his teeth and grabbed hold of a dirty pants leg to pull himself up. Suddenly, a muffled voice floated from the other side of the wall. Who's there, it said. Don't worry, said Mo. it's only me. My name is Mo, and I need to climb across your wall so I can keep my path straight and narrow. I'm trying to get out of trouble. Aren't we all, moaned the voice from somewhere under the messy pile. I've been in trouble for five years, I bet. How did you get into trouble in the first place? Mo called into a shirt collar that had a dirty ring around it. 
Those dirty rings, those mother had tried soaking them out, scrubbing them out, but still they would not come clean. I'm not real sure, answered the voice. I just kept putting off till tomorrow what I could have done today or what was then today, and pretty soon I was buried under all this mess. Now I'm boxed in and I can't get out. I guess I never realized that yesterday's can be behind you and that today's can be with you, but tomorrow never comes. Would you like me to help you with this mess called Mo? Uh, no thank you, said boxed in. You just up, you just end up getting boxed in too. I got myself into this mess and I'll have to get myself out of it. You'd better keep walking the straight and narrow path. Maurice figured it would do no good to ask box in about the rainbow maker because he'd been buried under all that mess for so long that he'd probably forgotten what a rainbow was and wouldn't want to be reminded either. Goodbye, Mo said. Good luck. Same to you, called the voice. Mo slid and stumbled down the other side of the pile and reached, a, reached ground again. He kept pushing ahead, keeping his path straight and narrow. For the first time, the tangled jungle of undergrowth and fallen logs broke into a clearing. Maurice made good time for a few minutes. He was very surprised to find what first looked like a birthday party going on in the middle of the forest clearing. <clears throat> there was a big table with a yummy looking cake and bowl of bright red punch sitting on top of it. There were all kinds of toys, games, and noise makers scattered about the table. And sitting around the table were a half dozen boys and girls dressed in their finest party clothes. But there was something strange about this party, and it took Mo a little while to notice none of the kids were having any fun. None were eating cake and drinking punch. None were playing games or making noise. All just sat with their heads bowed and their whole and their hands folded in their laps. Moe's straight and narrow path brought him right up to the strange party. Whose birthday party is this? asked Moe cheerfully. All of the children blushed a deep shade of scarlet and all but one bit their lower lips so they wouldn't let themselves speak to Moe. A little boy, the only one not biting his lip, timidly answered Moe's question in a feeble, trembling voice. This isn't a birthday party. It's a guilty party. None of us are having birthdays, but we're all guilty. Why are you all sitting here feeling guilty when you could be eating, playing, and having a good time? Mo thought about how much fun he'd had on his last birthday. Because, said the little boy, if we made noise and ate cake, our parents would get mad. If our parents were to get mad at us, then we would be in trouble. And if we were in trouble, then we would obviously be guilty of something. I really don't think your parents would mind if you ate cake and made noise at a party, said Mo. There's a time and a place for everything, and a party is the time and the place to have fun. That may be true where you come from, said the little boy, but not here. We live in trouble all the time, and since we're in trouble all the time, we're guilty all the time. Here we have guilty parties only, and they're never any fun. Please, Mr. Mole, stop asking me questions. 
Mo wanted so badly to show the kids how much fun a real party should be. He also wanted a big piece of that cake and a glass of punch. But he wasn't invited to the guilty party, and he knew the children would feel even guiltier if he stayed. He started back on his way. <clears throat> Mo didn't like being in trouble. You couldn't have any fun as long as you were in trouble. He was very sad when the clearing ended and the forest started again. The drizzle still drizzled and Mo was cold and wet, but he kept walking his straight and narrow path. It was his only chance of ever finding the Rainbow Maker. The underbrush became so thick that it took Mo almost an hour to walk a few hundred feet. The longer he trudged through the forest, the lower his spirits dropped. For the first time, Mo thought about giving up his search and going back home. All he had to do was dig down a few feet, find a familiar mole highway, and head on home. But how could he face his family, his friends? Worst of all, how could he face his own reflection in the mirror? Maurice was so lost in his thoughts that he didn't see a huge dead log lying across his straight and narrow path. He smashed right into it. Ouch, you know, Mo, rubbing his sore pink but soon to be purple nose. Logs were as bad as tree roots. While Mo is sitting on the ground rubbing his sore nose and feeling sorry for himself in general, he was almost sure he heard a door open behind him. He turned around and was amazed to see a small door opening out of the log. And he was even more amazed to see an old lady possum standing in the doorway, peeking out over her spectacles at what all the commotion was about. It took her a moment to spot Mo. Young man, she gasped, are you all right? Yes, ma'am, said Mo. Don't worry, it's just a little bump on my nose. I'm used to that, believe me. Well, you come inside and let me make sure you're okay, said the old lady possum. It's freezing out here in the backyard. You'll catch your death of cold. I just took some hot persimmon and beech nut cookies out of the oven. That was all Maurice needed to hear. He got up, wiped his muddy feet on the doormat, and stepped into the log. Inside, the log reminded Mo a lot of his own molehill back home. It was small and dimly lit, but it was cozy, and the smell of the cookies made Mo's mouth water. Sit yourself down on one of those chairs, said the possum. I'll get you a blanket and a cup of hot dandelion tea to warm you up. That's very kind of you, ma'am, said Mo. He plopped down into an overstuffed armchair. It was like sitting on a mattress of marshmallows after spending the night on the rock-hard cave floor. My name is Security, called the old lady possum from the kitchen. I've been living in this old log on the edge of this forest for 30 years. I've raised 347 children here. It's quite a scene here on Thanksgiving. She chuckled as she put some honey in Mo's tea. <clears throat> Maurice was already feeling much better. He was warm for the first time in a full day, and security's ramblings made him think of his mother back home. Security brought Mo a cup of piping hot dandelion tea and a saucer piled high with persimmons and beech nut cookies. They were scrumptious. Security talked while Mo ate. You know, it's funny. Over the years, I've watched so many young folks like yourself, heading into trouble, but you're one of the few I've seen coming back out. Mo was so startled 
by her words that he almost choked on a beech nut he was chewing. Do you mean that I am finally out of trouble? Why, yes, laughed security. Didn't you know? Trouble's always creeping around my back door, but outside my front door, it's sunshine as far as you can see. You don't know how happy I am to hear that, laughed Mo. I thought I'd never get out of trouble. It was a lot easier getting into it to trouble than getting back out. A lot of folks never get out of trouble once they get into it too deep, said security. But tell me, how did such a nice young mole like you get into trouble in the first place? I'm not real sure, said Mo. I got off the beaten path, talked to a very nice lady named Calm, and then suddenly I was in trouble with the creeps, willies, and heebie-jeebies sleeping in a cave. It was horrible. That's the way it usually happens, said security, shaking her gray-haired head sadly. <clears throat> Leaving the beaten path is actually the first step into getting into trouble. Meeting calm before the storm is the second. Next, the storm hits, and you know you're in trouble. Usually, the only way to get back out is to walk the straight and narrow path. That's exactly what I did, said Mo. I know it was my only chance of ever finding the Rainbow Maker. Of finding who? Security asked. Maurice told the old lady possum his whole story and showed her his piece of the rainbow. She was very impressed. Tell me, Security, you've lived here a long time. Do you know where the Rainbow Maker lives? As a matter of fact, I believe I do, said Security. I'll show you where he lives from my front door after you finish your cookies and tea. Maurice was so excited by her words that he burned his tongue trying to gulp down the rest of his hot dandelion tea. Thanks so much for the tea and cookies, ma'am, said Mo. but I really must be on my way. Could you point out where the rainbow maker lives? Follow me, said security. She led Mo to the front door and together they stepped outside. The weather was lovely. The sun smiled down on the grass and flowers. Mo could hear bluebirds and crickets singing. A soft breeze carried a honeysuckle melody across Mo's nose. Maurice saw a butterfly that looked a lot like high hopes. Security pointed toward the west to the mountains. They looked a lot closer now than they did when Mo had started his journey. <clears throat> Do you see that tall pointed peak that looks almost like a cow horn? asked security. Mo nodded. Well, the rainbow maker lives on top of that mountain. The pinnacle of perfection, they call it. When you reach the pinnacle of perfection, you will find the Rainbow Maker. Finally, Maurice had met someone who knew of the Rainbow Maker, and she even knew where he lived. You've been too kind to me, security, said Mo. Goodbye. Once again, this time with high hopes, faith, but not blind faith, and security in his heart, Mo sat out, set out to find the Rainbow Maker, but this time Mo wasn't walking aimlessly about. This time he was running with joy. Running with joy, heading to chapter 5, the pinnacle of perfection, which we will pick up in the next video. Yes, little dog, are you surviving? Bye, guys.